All right, we have since baked our clear layer. And as you can see, you can't really see a difference with adding that clear layer. You can just maybe see a little in the camera. It does kind of look dewy to me, but not a real huge difference to tell that you have it on or not. This next step, your camera seemed to froze. I am mixing together my crease color. And I know a lot of people use um, just the lip and blush and nail number four from Brown Triple Baby. Um, and to me, it makes the babies pink. My first one was really, really pink. But if you look at your shadows and your creases, that's what you're making. You're making the shadow that you see. And it's not pink. It's more of a um, black and gray are not really, they're um, not natural. So it's going to be made up of like a purplish color, purplish pink. So um, what I do is I mix together the number four lip blush and nail with the eyelid purple. And this time I threw in a little glob of um, the Look Alive Thinning Medium to make it a little bit more thicker. And I do have a little bit of thinner here on my little thing here because this is a little dark. So you can thin it out a little bit if you want to. Sometimes I bring some of the liquid into here, into the lid, because it's more of the consistency that I want. And I have a couple brushes here to determine what I'm going to. I'm going to use this really small one and see if this works how I want it. So I'm going to take some and I'm going to start working in the eye creases. And working that color around into all the folds. Make sure you're paying attention to all the folds in your fold increases in your kit. Because I notice a lot of people, mostly beginners, don't even they don't even highlight their um, creases and stuff. So you don't even get the full detail of the baby. And this is what really makes things stand out and look real. Any paint that gets out that you don't want, you just blend. And if the line is seems a little hard, I let it flash a little bit. Then I go and I blend those edges or blend those hard lines to where it looks natural. Some more color. Make sure I get them in all the creases. Blend it out so it doesn't look like a line. We don't want things look like we took a marker and lined our piece. And this is where also I could take this little bit bigger brush and I'm going to take some of this over here so it's a little thinner. And this is where I'm going to highlight. Highlight in here all the indentations in the kit. To bring out the face shape. You can see that's slight. And then some more and then we can do the soft spot. 
and bring that down. And I'll let that flash a little bit before I pounce it. And this is just highlighting the curves of the face. And you can get some more of that lighter color. And this is when you bring it in around the mouth, around the nose, right in here above the lip. do around the lip if you want. I do it around the little set of cupids, whatever that's called there. Kind of highlighting some. You can come back up here and blend out any harsh lines. So we're just bringing in the shadows. To show these, we're not, we don't want drastic lines. So we're bringing out that detail by just making a shadow so we can see it. You want it to look as natural as possible. Blend your edges. Blend your creases. I tend to do it darker just because I know how to manage my my paint but you don't want to start out doing it dark when you're just learning. That way you can build it up a little bit. And sometimes I'll let this dry and then you can go back and add a little bit more over it before you bake. I also want to add some inside the nose. I did used to open my nose of the, my kits and I only do that now for if, um, if I'm doing a custom order and my customer special requests that the nose be open just because I've seen some of the more um, experienced artists no longer doing it just to keep the integrity of the doll, keep moisture out. So, um, and it's easier to just paint, and there's ways to paint the nose to where it looks like it's, it has depth and it's all the way going in. Um, and the way I used to do it was with my Dremel, but there's times where the Dremel will get too close to the outside rim of the nostril and it can take a chunk out, or if um, the Dremel gets kind of out of control, it will skip across the top of the nose and call, cause indentation, which is very hard to um, fix or blend or cover up. So it's just easier to um, learn how to properly paint the inside of the nostril. So then we're going to make sure I can see here if I do it darker. I'll show you. a little bit darker underneath the chin and then just blend it out so it doesn't look like a straight line And it looks like it's creating a shadow 
which will be more realistic for your lifelike baby. What we could do is take some more of this dark and go back and add some more. To that crease. So it looks like the eyes are actually closed and will separate so you're creating that shadow that's naturally there when the eyes are closed. With the ears, I usually just come in here and get the paint all inside. I let that flash before I pounce it and then I sometimes I'll go around here and create the shadow around the ear and blend it and then just come in here and smooth out your brushing to create the shadow inside the ear. So you're going to do that on the head. Let's, let's do the feet. Now, just like the on the crease of the eye, how you want to do it darker, I really do it dark right where toes meet toes and fingers because you want to give the perception that they separate that they're just connect that they're just smushed together so you're going to give that false shadow a darker shadow when the toes are connected So that it appears as if they're stuck, that they're just together and that you, they will come apart. So for any fingers or toes that are connected, I usually do a darker shadow line to show, to make it look like they will come apart, but they obviously don't. And when you do that on the top, you want to make sure that you do that on the bottom as well. And you can see, hopefully, that sometimes it gets smudged when you go from the front to the back or back to the front. You just blend that. Make sure it's not messy. Then you get your color and you make sure that you do the dark line underneath where there's any overlapping to give that false illusion even when the toe bends down you want to give that false shadow to make it look like it's real and it's just folded over and I don't see a lot of people doing the shadow work that gives the illusion that you would see on a real baby if this is how its feet were.
Make sure you blend as well to make sure there's no harsh lines. And of course there's going to be some uh, shadowing underneath the toes. This is what really gives the feet and the hands the illusion that they're, they're real. sure you get all the creasing blend blend blobby spots and this foot has a lot a lot a lot of wrinkles so you want to make sure that you get that color in there These shadows is what's going to make everything look so real. And even there, even though there's not really a crease right here, there's still an indention. You want to give that a little shadow. Same for the outside. There's an indentation right here underneath the ankle. and all the folds. So we're going to make sure all these wrinkles around the toes, around the feet, especially around the front ankle area here. As you can see, I got it dark there, but that's how this is how I usually do it. I find the easiest way is to go in, blob it in there, let it flash a little bit because you want that. If you fidget with it when it's wet, you're just going to wipe away the color. So if you go in after it flashes, it's a dry brush, you know, smaller brush in these spots and you just pounce it a little bit just to make sure that there's no harsh lines and you're wiping any excess around this, the outside of the crease and blending. But you want to give that illusion of those folds so that it looks like a real baby's foot. So, you know, this one has a lot, a lot of wrinkles, but you want to get in every single one. If you're going to do um, the pink pads, nail pads, you can do a little shadowing at the bottom. To give the dimension. And if, it seems like the big toenail is the only one that has this, if it has the line right here that the, at the top of the nail and there's a little indention, you can put some shadowing in there to give the illusion of underneath the nail bed or your nail right here to give that shadow. 
to give it some dimension. So, and of course, in the big creases, I just brush on. This is me just brushing the dark on. I'm just brushing it all the way through. That's usually how I do the the bigger ones. This will be dark. Just brush it on. Usually I'll get impatient with doing layers and layers and layers. So just brush it on messy like that. Make sure you get it all the way through. I'll let it flash a little bit like this. And then you just go in and you pounce it out. Again, let it flash a little bit so that you don't smear your color around. Just wipe it off if it has too much thinner. And then, so you're creating the illusion of the shadow of the leg being bent. And then with the fatty rolls, you're just going to fan out the color because you just want the illusion of a shadow. I have hair in there that's bugging me. Illusion of a shadow. So it's not going to be any harsh lines, it's just going to be shading that's going to create the illusion of the fold on the legs. And I'll do the rest of that so I can, this one will take, talking about shadows is going to take quite a bit of time. I want the little one. So I'll show you the basics and then go back and finish. So the same with the hands. All these lines. You're creating shadow. So as you can see, you know, you can see the lines in my hand because of the shadows. So everywhere you see a crease should be a shadow. Fingers. This one has little lines. You can just go a little bit up and down on the lines. This kit doesn't have any um, closed fingers, so it wouldn't be this, um, we're not going to be doing the same to the toes, like when they're closed. I can grab another kit and show what that would look like. Let me see real quick. I don't have any. I'll do a separate video for closed hands. So, because I'd have to get up. So you want to make sure, especially you can see these fingers are bent. You're gonna want shadows in there.
I think this is one very important detail that um, a lot of people don't do on their babies that show, that bring all these details up and make the baby look more realistic. Or they do it in the pink color that some babies, some artists have signature looks that are more pink that do look realistic, but for me, I can see, you know, to me, I, it just looks like a pink baby. sure you're getting all these creases to show the shadows. And you're going to have a more realistic looking baby. I'll go back and do that because this, this kit has lots and lots and lots and lots of wrinkles. So we'll do some of the belly plate. Again, wrinkles on the sides. Because you're not gonna you're not even gonna see these if you don't highlight them. And again bounce away any harsh lines. You just want it to look like a shadow. Do that on both sides. Now we're really going to accentuate this belly area and even because you know how there's usually the indentation right in here. We're really going to highlight that Come in and smooth this out. You want to make sure you stay in with the curvature of the kit to give that illusion. You want to accentuate that little detail that um, most of the belly plates have. And there's a lot of creasing on this little stub here. Make sure you get underneath. All these big creases in here, folds where the legs are going to be. Not sure yet how dark I'm going to do this little stub. You want to darken in the deep folds. To make it look like 
there's really, you know, it's really coming out of there. So we're giving the highlight the little fold near the armpit, down where the legs are, the indentation in the chest, the stub. You can see, you know, the shadowing is making it look more dimensional and more real. So I will finish doing the, the detailing of that and then do the first bake and then we will go um, do a, at least one more layer, if not two more.